This is the Arctic Silver version. This is for T-Mobile, but this is unlocked because it's bought outright without contract or jump plan. But it's got a really shiny chrome finish. It looks really premium so far. I'm really impressed with this color. I thought I would like the black better, but actually I'm leaning more towards the Arctic Silver now. I see it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on while I check what else is in the box. So as you can see here, I have the T-Mobile SIM card. I have some material for how to use your phone and things like that. And here's the SIM ejector tool. We have the USB Type-C to micro USB port adapter. And then we have the USB Type-C to USB connector. Adaptive fast charge. We have some headphones that are tuned by AKG, not designed by AKG. They were actually made by Samsung, so don't um, believe everything you hear. And just because it says AKG on the headphones doesn't mean they're made by AKG, since Samsung bought them out recently. We have the USB Type-C connector and some earbuds. That's about it, guys, in the box. So as you can see, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I'm glad is still here. We have the USB Type-C connector, which is reversible, which is a nice addition to how Apple's connector works, which is lightning. So now we finally can switch, not have to know which way the connector goes in. So that's nice. We have a single firing speaker, sadly, no um, front firing speakers right now. We have the microphone. So on this side, we have the Bixby button dedicated to Bixby. It actually can be remapped at this moment, but if you get a new software update in the future, it will be disabled by Samsung to be only used for Bixby. So right now you might be able to use it for other things, but if you get the software update in the future, then you may not be able to use it. We have the volume rocker. And on the back, we have the fingerprint scanner. Let me see how easy it is. As you can see, it's pretty hard to reach, so I have to actually move up the phone just to reach the fingerprint scanner but it seems to work well once you um, find the right orientation. As you can see here, the button is no longer physical it has hardware for vibration to mimic the press of an actual button. It actually feels pretty realistic. That's a nice thing. So when the display is off, you just press where the home button is and it will automatically activate. So let me test out the fingerprint scanner. So. so yeah, it's actually pretty hard to reach. See, but once you get the hang of it, it actually might not be that bad, but it definitely is something getting used to. And please make sure you wipe off the camera before taking pictures if you use the fingerprint scanner because you know you'll get smudges all over the camera so just keep that in mind and also the new feature is that you can actually remap the buttons because on the Galaxy S7 you had the buttons were physical so you could not remap them so finally we have that option so let me show you where that is so you go to settings display and you go to navigation bar home so we can switch that to the, the layout that Google actually has set on their devices. So this is nice to have it like this. And you can also up the sensitivity or lower the sensitivity of how much pressing 
it will take to activate the home button. So that's another nice thing. And you can also change the button color. So if you don't want it to be transparent, you can change it to black. We have the 12 megapixel camera, the flash, and the heart rate sensor, which is really nice. Um, as you can see, it's under the glass now, so it's not gonna get scratched up like it was last year on the S7 with the heart rate sensor just having plastic on it and it being its own little area, so now it's flush with the device. That's a nice addition to the device. We have the power button on this side, and on top we have the SIM tray and another microphone. So as you can see, T-Mobile has already pushed out an update that'll improve the facial recognition, basically performance and stability, things like that. So this is nice to already have an update. On the hardware side, we have an 8-core CPU, which is the Snapdragon 835. It has semi-custom ARM cores, four clocked at 2.36 gigahertz and four at 1.9 gigahertz. We have the GPU, which is the Adreno 540. We have four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and of course we have the screen resolution, which is 2560. Actually, that's incorrect. That's actually what the app is being rated at, but it's 2960 by 1440, which is once you enable the full screen mode, you can make this app at the native resolution of the screen. So let me show you how to do that. So you go to settings, display, full screen apps, and then you can select apps if they haven't already been selected to use the full screen mode. So let me select CPU-Z. Let's go back to it and see if it changes. As you can see now, it's at full resolution of the screen. So this works really well for most apps. There's a few apps that may not scale properly with this, but as you can see now, it's changed to its native resolution. So overall, I'm really impressed with the build quality and Samsung has really stepped it up even from last year. However, the fingerprint scanner is a letdown, but I think the display quality and the improvements in design with a bigger display on a smaller body is much better than just having a better fingerprint sensor placement since you have the iris scanner as well this year. So thanks for watching guys. Like if you like this, dislike if you dislike this. Please keep subscribed for more content like this in the future. Thanks.